We all love elephants, don't we? Is that a yes? yes? But what does an elephant mean to us? For some, they might mean large-bodied mammals who are ranging free and wild in pristine forested areas who are beautiful to be photographed. For others, they could be pests feeding from crops that are painstakingly grown. For some others, they could be the embodiment of Lord Ganesha himself. But if you ask a biologist, an elephant biologist like me, trying to understand human and elephant interaction over the last 10 years, I would wonder what the elephant might think of us humans. In the Anthropocene, a geological age that we are living in now, where the human impact on wild animals and elephants not being an exception has been immense. What might the elephants be thinking of us? Increasing anthropogenic activities and pressures on shared resources between humans and elephants has brought elephants ever closer to us, to an extent where elephants are today seen very close to urban habitats. This is a highway that you see. You can see trucks moving. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. And soon, you will meet one of the individual elephants that I study. Meet Hiristha. Hir means king, Ista is knowledge, and Or is giver. For me, Hiristha is a 21st century elephant. He knows how to open gates. <laughs> he can also probably perceive and assess the level of threat the human being posed to him, and he was calm, he was relaxed. He didn't attack unprovoked. He also knows that he has to look right while crossing the road. That's the four-lane highway. And elephants do this. But it's not all hunky-dory. It's not easy for elephants living alongside humans in human-dominated landscape. And most often, the end is not very happy. This is Hiristar, the same elephant that you saw crossing the highway, being held captive. He was captured and taken. His mistake, that he was roaming around in human-dominated landscape where the potential con conflict between humans and elephants is immense. So the question we ask today is, how are we breaking an elephant in today's world? And why should we care at all? I think we should care, because I believe that elephants, very similar to us humans, are sentient beings. Let me show you how. We use camera traps to study distribution and movement of elephants in human-dominated areas. Think of a camera trap as a device that is tied to a tree. Whenever there is movement of an animal in front of the camera trap, the camera takes a photograph. Recently, our camera traps were visited by a group of young boys from the local village. And this is what they, what they did. There was one boy, second, third. They were curious. They came very close and looked at the camera. They went back, came back with another young friend. He seemed aggressive, maybe the dominant of the whole, uh, individual of the whole gang. So he's pointing the finger at the camera, probably saying, oh, I'm going to teach these researchers a lesson today. So they go back and come and perform a dance in front of the camera. <laughs> well, how different are elephants? Meet Tintin. He's named Tintin because his tusks are curved upwards like the hair of Tintin. This is the first time Tintin is in front of this camera. The camera is placed at a point where Tintin crosses over to the crop field. So as soon as Tintin has come in front of the camera, the camera woke up, took a photograph with a flash. This is at night. This must have reminded Tintin of the torch lights that farmers used to chase elephants away from crop fields. And his response was obvious. He turned back and started running. But something different happened. The flash and the torch light was not accompanied by bursting crackers or people shouting and chasing behind an elephant. So he turned back to find out what's happening. He's blind in the right eye. He can only see with his left. So he takes a better look from his left eye. He's not convinced. You can see him shifting his weight from one leg to another, and that's ambivalent behavior in elephants. He's still not convinced, so he goes to the other side, takes a closer look at the camera from the left eye, goes back, still not convinced, 
chunk in the mouth, again an ambivalent behavior. He's thinking, trying to figure out what is this alien thing that is there in my home right now. So he comes back, he seems more relaxed after a while. He probably thinks, okay, I know there's something, but it may not be a threat. So I'll move on because I need to go out and feed on crops. So he goes. And note the date, it's 5 7 2016. The next day, a young associate of his, PT Jr., comes to the exact same camera. His response is very similar. He goes back, turns around, and thinks that it's okay, and he moves. A few days later, three days to be precise, both the elephants come in front of the camera. It's Tintin and PT Jr. there. They seem to be trying to figure out what's there. They even come and touch the camera, just like the young, aggressive, dominant, young a boy did, showing his finger. But luckily, they didn't damage it. Again, PT Jr. is touching his face with his face with its trunk, which is ambivalent behavior. They seem to have a small discussion and decided that it's all okay. We know that this device or whatever, the object is there, it's not harming us. So they go back. But every time they come back along this route and see the camera, they make eye contact with the camera. They see if it's there. Tintins come, taking a closer look. P2 Jr. comes closer, takes a closer look. And then they move on. What does this tell us about elephants? Elephants are extremely intelligent beings. In a rapidly changing landscape, elephants need to uh, update their mental model of reality all the time in order to survive. In what other ways are they similar to us? They're group living and highly social beings. In fact, in elephant societies, it's the oldest female that takes decisions and leads the herd. The young males around the age of 10 to 15 years disperse from the natal group to avoid inbreeding and they move out to rather live a very solitary life thereafter. An elephant lives up to 70 years. But what has happened to their habitat and what have we done to their habitat within the span of the 70 years? They've lost nearly 70% of their habitat. What does it mean? It means that elephants are in constant conflict with people. In India alone, every year, about 400 human lives and about 150 elephants succumb to this conflict. So the rapid and large-scale land use change has left a lot of our elephants homeless. So what do we see today? Today we see elephants like this, being coursed across crop fields, large herds. You don't see forests there, you see open crop fields. And in these groups, you can also see young calves that are born in a conflict area. They're living there, they're growing up there. Imagine what, could, what these young elephants may be thinking. For them, growing up, conflict is a norm. It's like your child and my child growing up in a city like Bangalore. Traffic becomes a norm after a while. It's there, it's part of daily life. But it's very difficult for elephants, especially young ones, to live and survive in such landscapes because it's high risk. So they have two options. One is that they learn through trial and error. And this is especially true for young dispersing males like him because they need to set out on their own. If trial and error is done, they have to learn all of it on their own and the risks are too high, so high that they can get killed. One of our young males tried to cross the Bangalore-Chennai highway and was hit by a bus and he died. The other option, of course, is you could associate yourself with another experienced male who's been living in this human-dominated area. He knows how to navigate across this landscape. So let's go back to Hiristha, 20 years ago. You see young Hiristha there to your extreme right, following an older bull on the life. Hiristha was learning how to navigate this landscape by associating with peer group members and with older individuals. And today, you see Hiristar again being a dominant bull on the left, accompanied by two younger males into the same human dominant area where he was 20 years ago. And at one point, you will see Hiristar slowing down, and he takes a swift right, and the young males follow. So the older bulls are extremely essential in a bull society and in the elephant population. They not just help the younger males how to navigate and survive in challenging landscapes, but also help them be calm and not end up killing people because of the inexperience of the younger bulls. The older males have a calming effect on the younger males 
which can avoid deaths. So males developed a strategy. When we changed their home, home range, modified it from a forested area to a non-forested one, the young males decided that they have to band together in order to survive in such a landscape. That's what they know. So we broke them at one point, but they showed us that they were unbreakable, thanks to their behavioral plasticity. So we study elephants, especially these males, during the day and at night. We observe how they interact with one another. Who do they associate with? What are their time activity budgets? And how we can actually inform in management in reducing and or mitigating conflict. This has become a common sight now. Young males and other elephants being coursed and chased across crop fields. You see five young males here who are being chased into a forested area during the day. So they get bolder over time. But like I said, it's risky. A number of the young males that we were studying started dying of electrocution, of accidents. They were shot by irate farmers. It was not just elephants who were getting killed, it was people too. A number of human deaths happened, and a lot of it was because the elephant was scared when it encountered a person. They didn't know how to respond because older males such as Hirsta were not there. They were taken out. So modification of behavior and adaptation to an urbanizing landscape in elephants has its cost, both social and personal. And Hiristha probably paid the ultimate price. He was kept in captivity. And being in captivity is no easy. It's a very difficult situation to be in, and it's really not for the faint-hearted. Life in captivity, at least in the early interaction period between the mahout and the elephant, is all about establishing dominance. It's about power equation. But I interacted with the mahouts and the elephants too in elephant camps, trying to figure out how this relationship works. Let me show this to you again with an example. Here is an old male who ha who's in must, and he has his mahout with him. And you see that the interaction is very calm and peaceful. He even picks up his own chain and goat. And here you see another male elephant of the same age, in must again, experienced male with an experienced mahout, and you'll see the interaction to be one which is aggressive. So what was the difference between the two interactions? It was just time spent together. An interaction which moves from being a dominance interaction between the two individuals towards a more associative, affiliative interaction. And this requires time. Who doesn't? All of us do need time. And elephants, currently in today's scenario, need that time and space to adapt to the changes that we are making in their home. Hiristha is today in an elephant camp. Only time will tell if he will associate with his new mahout. Will he actually uh, still remember his past, or will he look forward to another future with interacting with humans? I'd like to end leaving you with just two points that you can take home. One, every time that you see an elephant in chain or in captivity, do remember that it has a dark past, a past that should remind us of the hegemonic relationship that we share not only with the elephants, but a lot of other living beings around us. The second, and probably a very important one, a lesson learned from elephants, is that every time we tried breaking them, they showed us that they could rise with the help of behavioral plasticity. Maybe it's time for us humans also to show some behavioral plasticity to, towards elephants. Maybe it's time we have lifestyles that are more compatible with elephant use of the area. Thank you.